Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here with some very exciting news. I'm delighted to bring to you Lumi 32, a world first and the next generation of luminosity masks. Lumi 32 is coming out on the 29th of November and for the first week you'll be able to get it at a hugely discounted rate. So to purchase the panel you can see the link in the description of this video if you're watching it on YouTube or on the link that's popping up in the top right hand corner. Now Lumi 32 is actually a plug-in panel hybrid and what that means is it looks like a Photoshop panel but actually all of the calculations are done outside of Photoshop. So I was able to use my experience in exposure blending to design the best possible luminosity masks. So now we don't have to rely on the limited luminosity masks in Photoshop. Now let me give you a very quick rundown of what Lumi32 does. Firstly, it's a 32-bit luminosity mask generator, but it's much more than that because it allows us to create user-defined masks. And I'm gonna talk about how great that is in a second. But we can develop those 32-bit masks in RGB mode, red, green, and blue, individual channels, lab mode, saturation masks, and we have this zone picker, which allows us to use very specific zone systems in our workflow. So I'm gonna show you the power of Lumi32 in this video, but to begin with, I just wanna show you one really cool feature of the panel. You see, we have these presets down here, which I've designed, and if we press brights one, we can create a bright one mask. Now you'll see this histogram up here, and the great thing about that is, it's entirely dynamic. So if we wanna shift our tones, right now we're selecting highlights, but we wanna move it and select the shadows. Look at the histogram change. And it's telling us what's selected in the mask. So whatever's blue is selected in the mask, whatever's green is partially selected, and whatever's red is completely excluded from the mask. So if I let go, now we have a darks mask. And if I move that back, or I change the range of the mask, and make it much more specific. You can see the histogram shifting, telling us that we have a very narrow range of highlights now selected in the mask. So that histogram is a fantastic way to visualize the masks that you're creating before you create them. And of course, we have other sliders here which do some incredibly useful things, which I'll show you later. But now let me show you what I mean by user-defined masks. So if we go up to this image here, I have a darker exposure on top and a brighter exposure in the bottom. And I'm just gonna create a mask on that darker exposure. Now I wanna make a selection of these highlights in the image, because they're a little bit overexposed. So I can do that by pressing brights one, one of these presets here. Now let's say I wanna adjust the mask and I just wanna select the highlights. Well, we could use brights three or brights five, but I'm gonna bring the range down so we've got a really contrasting mask. You see, we're just selecting the brightest part of the image. And let's say I think that's a really good mask and I'm gonna use it. Well. I can hold down any one of these buttons on here. So I'm gonna hold down for three seconds and you'll see a prompt appears and I can type in night cityscape. So if I really like this mask and I think I'm gonna use it in different workflows, I can save it. And even if you close Photoshop or you close the panel, it'll always be there. You can reset these presets again using this setting button down here. But for now, let's try this out. So I'm gonna press apply here and just apply the mask I created onto the darker exposure. So there you go, there's before and after. So we've blended those exposures. Now let's say a couple of days later, I'm working on another night cityscape and I wanna do the same thing. So here I have a darker exposure on top, brighter exposure on the bottom. And on the brighter exposure, we have some overexposed highlights on the top here. So I can once again, create a black mask if I want on the darker exposure, open up Lumi32, and just press Night Cityscape. And there you go, we've created that exact same mask that we used last time. And if I press Select, and a white brush, make sure I've got the mask selected, hide the marching ants, I can then paint in the areas in this image that are overexposed. So I can zoom in now, choose the brush again, and just paint in that area. So there's before and after. And let me move along a little bit to this area up here. And there's before and after again, you see? So we've got these really convenient ways to save our masks anytime you want and access them anytime down the line. Now, when I talk about Lumi32 creating masks outside of Photoshop, what I mean is Photoshop has had these masks for a long time. They haven't changed or evolved in any way. And I've been doing exposure blending for years now. 
and a lot of the times the masks are hard to create or don't fit purpose and you have to kind of experiment with them and take the time to try and get the right one, which can sometimes be fiddly. So I worked with a developer to come up with a better algorithm specific to Lumi32 that will help us create better masks. For example, we've got an interior shot here and if anyone's followed any of my courses, they'll recognize this apartment. This is my old apartment in South Korea. Now, I have a bright exposure on the bottom, a dark exposure on top. Now, let's say I wanna use luminosity masks in Photoshop. And let's say I wanna choose a bright three because I'm trying to select only the window. I can select some of this interior, but mainly I wanna select the window. So if I go for a brights three, look at how much of the exterior is visible in brights three. Or if I go for a brights two, again, the mask is less contrasting, but we've still got too much of that exterior there. Now we can adjust the mask. We can dodge and burn it, or we can use these great sliders in Instamask. And you see we are brightening the outside significantly to remove those external points. But now look how harsh the mask is. Now if we bring down this mid-tone slider, that does actually help a bit. So we do come out with the less striking mask. If I keep bringing that down, however, it's going to restore some of the details in the window, which we don't want. But with Lumi32, we kind of bypass all of that straight away. So I'm just gonna create a bright three mask. And now look at the window. Almost instantly, we have probably only 30% of what we had there before. Most of the window's white and we just have some faint details here. So we are separating those tones much more efficiently than Photoshop does. And in order to make this a better selection, we can raise the amplification, which basically only affects the selected parts of the image. So when I was bringing the highlight slider along before in Instamask, it was affecting all of the tones. But amplification here, and as you can see, the histograms moving along, telling us what's happening, it's only affecting the selected tones. So if I let go of that, you see we've almost eradicated the window and we haven't affected the shadows. And beautifully, this mask is much smoother. The transition between the shadows and the highlights is much smoother. If we wanna make an even smoother mask, we can bring the smoothness down to the left here. And you see, that softens the mask even more, including the shadows. So let's look at some other things in Lumi32. Well, we have also zone masks. So we can choose zone pick here, and that will allow us to choose from zero to 10 specific tones in our image. So let's say I'm gonna go for nine and press okay. So that has given us a selection of the highlights in the water and some of the mountain. And we can increase that zone just a little bit if we want by bringing up range. And you see, we've increased the brightness in the water in the foreground and more of the mountain. And if I want, I can press curves here and that will create a curves mask. And I can bring up the curve and add extra brightness specifically to those areas just to give it a little bit more kick. So with Lumi32, not only can we create beautiful masks for exposure blending, we can also make really targeted adjustments to specific tones within our image. And there's another really useful feature too. So we've got my image here of Antelope Canyon, and I can create a black and white mask. But before I do that, let me reset my presets, because I need brights one for this. So now I've got my black and white mask. And if I look at that mask and think, wow, that actually makes quite a nice black and white image. I can adjust the sliders obviously any way I want. So I could make um, a little bit more contrast by bringing up smoothness, let's say. And then I can press this image button here, which turns my mask into an actual image, a layer in Photoshop. Now, as I mentioned before, there are other mask possibilities. So we have an interactive pick where we can pick a particular tone in our image and that will create a mask around that tone. So it's a point and click option. We can create a saturation mask. And you may notice a little bit of banding along here, but I'm working in 8-bit with a JPEG which has been through quite a bit of processing. Now we also have the option, if we choose luminosity, that'll give us just a normal mid-tone selection. I can bring the tone all the way along, so I'm selecting the highlights, and we can cycle through the red, green, and blue masks or we can even access lab mode and see if we can find a mask there instead. And having these options while also utilizing these incredible sliders, we can shape a mask in so many useful ways. So if you're interested in Lumi32, feel free to click the link in the description of this video if you're watching this on YouTube or the link that's popping up now.
The panel is coming out on the 29th of November and it will be hugely discounted for the first week.